apply systems thinking the principle number two from scaled agile framework so the whole idea is that think end to end think about the big picture rather than trying to solve a small component or small part of the problem you need to see the whole problem because the problems are kind of complex systems they there are components which are interlinked and one fix may create an adjustment in the another component and still the overall problem may remain as it is. One of the quote I can bring from a book named Fifth Discipline is, which tells that dividing an elephant does not produce a small elephant. Now our traditional notion of solving problem is we have a problem, let's divide into a small, small pieces and solve that piece. But the problem here is when you are solving that small piece, you are not getting the complete picture of the problem. And it may happen, you fix that small piece and problem gets shifted. Yeah. So in order to solve the complete the problem completely, we need to apply the system thinking. And that's the reminder which we are getting from Scaled Agile Framework as well as a principle number uh, two. Now, specifically speaking, the principle number two, if you go to a scaledagileframework.com, talks about three ideas getting into the details and it is saying the solution you which you are making is a system so the idea here is that you might be working on a complex large solution and it is just not one piece and when you are making decisions say you are making decision related to technology you are making decision related to usability you are making decision related to performance you cannot make isolated decision you need to see how overall customer goals how the overall solution get impacted by those decisions so when you are as a product management prioritizing things you need to see the complete system perspective because there is good amount of interdependency and if i try to create a my piece best assuming i am working on the performance side and I only want to create a best performance coming possible out of this particular solution, I may start compromise on usability piece. So there are trade-offs and those trade-offs need to be taken care in order to give an optimum system level performance and that is why when we are working on a large systems or a big system, big enough systems, we need to start looking at the interdependency and interconnectedness nature of the, the problem or a solution as well. So you are working on a solution which is also a, a system. The second thing which this principle reminds us from a scale agile perspective is the, the organization, the group, or you can say that number of people, teams, which are also building it, this particular whole thing is also a system. So say you are working on a large or a, on a significantly uh, big solution, say you have eight, nine teams working together to create a particular solution. Now, you different different teams working together is also creating an a, a organization system. So it may happen if one team is going slow, it may impact the another team and it can create a replicating effect on the complete system, which can derail the overall solution or a overall system goals. So uh, at, at, the, at, at the reverse could be that you try to create your team performing well, say you are one of those nine teams and you are doing your job good. You picked up some objectives and you try to fix those objectives at a best possible level. But still, it may not happen that you may uh, achieve the overall program goal or overall uh, uh, the organization goal as a whole group which you have uh, picked up. So I, especially when I'm in a, in a facilitation and coaching space like release train engineer and scrum master, need to remind my teams that it's just not what we have to achieve ourselves, but we need to ensure that as an overall group, as an overall agile release train, we need to produce our uh, committed solution or we need to produce a customer delivery value which can help us in achieving overall goal. So the whole idea here is this also needs to be managed. So if you don't manage the system in both the cases, the system may not get managed on its own. So if we leave the different different team doing their own work, they may start focusing on their perfect work situation, their perfect solutioning situation, and they may start avoiding how their approaches and their decisions might be impacting the other team. So by applying system thinking at a solution level as well as at the team level, we need to promote the system level goal over, uh, over the small component or a team level goal. So these are the two things which are uh, coming from this particular principle. The third thing, which is 
quite coming evidently from this particular principle is start thinking end to end delivery of your development value stream so you need to optimize the the requirement till delivery level of uh, the the flow and and ensure that if there is some blockages in between we need to find out how do we remove that so it is just not enough to create a feature yeah we need to optimize the 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 point from where the feature comes into your uh, backlog or in your preview and till the point the feature get delivered to the end customer so we need to optimize the complete end to end development value stream so that we apply a system view here because uh, if i am the the leader who is working with that particular agile release train i may not be just focusing on okay we have finished these many features and it was a great thing we did if those features are not going for a customer uh, uh, use and and if there is a delay between finishing the feature and the uses of the feature still the the value is not getting realized so the third aspect of applying system thinking is we may want to do a complete value stream analysis of our development value stream a tool where you see that how many steps we take before we deliver a value to our client it could be an internal client it could be an external client from the point the client gives the order and until the point we we deliver that particular value to the to the customer so what all steps we are taking and all all those steps where are the wastages maybe a wait time delays and and how can we optimize that so that's that's something is is focusing on overall system one of the key way to keep that focus is tracking the time from the point you are getting that particular request till the point you are delivering or delivering the value for your internal or external customers so you apply system thinking by appreciating by understanding that we are working on a system and just optimizing my component is is not enough we also appreciate that the whole group is also a organization which is a group of of people and that is also a system so focusing on my team's objective may not necessarily meets the overall system objective and once i understood the the solution is a system and the that the agile release train is also a system then i also start fo focusing on that i need to optimize the end to end delivery of my development value stream because i need to think end to end i need to think big and that's the whole idea of applying systems thinking